Ever wonder how some people make budgeting look so easy? Today, we're telling you a few habits that we have that make sticking to the budget a little easier, and hopefully they'll help you. Yes, guys, we have implemented these in our lives. We know that they're working. Mm -hmm. We are using them all the time. And so we hope, we know a lot of people ask us, hey, what are you doing? How are things do, going for you in your life with your budget? And so we wanted to bring this to you. Yeah, and I think it's important to us to have it be actual things that we're doing and relatable and real and not just cookie cutter other use coupons or whatever. Like, that's fine. Now that's for somebody else. Let's get into it. So we have our signature budget template. Guys, Brand new information. You. It's amazing. We've heard so many good things about it. We invite you to head over to mydoughbalance.com forward slash budget to look at that. It's going to help you track all of your spending. Yeah, we're, this is that's we're going way more like niche down and micro with our habits today. But the number one habit for sure is to have a budget mm -hmm. and to have the system. And it is going to be a game changer for you. So go ahead and grab that. OK, today we just have seven different like super relatable, small, but implementable little habits that we have that we know that help us to stick to the budget that we've set, right? Yes. And so uh, one of the things, the, probably the main one, is to budget how many times you're going to go out to eat each month. Now, this may blow your mind because we know you are busy. We yeah. know you have kids, probably. We know you have a lot going on. or maybe working late, husband's out and about or whatever. Mm -hmm. We get it. But you still need to have a budget on your spending or going mm -hmm. or your restaurants just like you do inside your budget for other things. Yeah, I can look back at when Chris and I got debt free and we literally never ate out, mm -hmm. just didn't. Now we're not there now, but we didn't. And it was a game changer. And it started when when I had a, when I, I had a budget because he was deployed and I was like, oh, there's can't afford to we eat can't out. go there's out to eat. Just, there's no do no dollars for that. And so that is what started the idea of, OK, if I can't go out to eat now, I need to start planning what I'm eating, planning exactly my meals what they're going to be and i remember girl the, it was not cute mm -hmm. there was a spreadsheet with every store how much first i had to figure out what i what do we eat what am i feeding them what do we need to buy every week every store was the price like it was serious you don't have to get that serious but definitely plan your meals because when you're tempted to eat out is when you are coming home from baseball practice yeah. or whatever and you for you forgot or you didn't think about anything so. or the kids are in the car and they're saying i'm hungry the, the deal is you still need to have a plan at home. So we understand that you're busy. We understand that you have stuff going on, but you cannot go out to eat every night. Yeah. That's not healthy at all for you internally, and it's not healthy for your budget. Pro tip, your kids are always hungry. Yes. So they're always going to be hungry when you pick them up at two, when you wake them up in the morning, when you get them after practice, mm -hmm. when you get them before practice, when you get them after their snack, after practice, before dinner. Yeah. They're always hungry. So have so many ways to feed them and make them pack them okay yeah we i feel like hobbits because we got the lunch that we pack we got the morning snack we got the afternoon snack we got the post snack we got before the game we've got all the snacks you guys yeah. because i know your fools are going to ask me for food to go out to eat to go stop at the gas station i don't have money for that i don't have no money no. so plan on them always being hungry <laughs> and just, just over plan yeah. it's one of those things like i would rather over yeah. budget for that than in food than under yeah and just have and and think this is getting off on a tangent but think about what you can put that will last all day whether it's beef jerky or yeah. bars or pistachios or whatever that, that you can just always have because they're always hungry. And I'm going to be super transparent really quick. I am in a season of my life right now, not super proud of it, but I am all about convenience. I just oh, am yeah. like, that's just who I am. And I've come to terms with it. I used to from scratch, make things all the time. And right now I just need something that's quick, something that's easy. So we're not telling you to go to the store and plan yeah. five course meals or whatever. No, we're telling you, you can pick up things that are quick and easy mm -hmm and healthy for your family. So I, I just want to make sure you heard that. And let me tell you what the that is. Baked potatoes. Yeah. Let me tell you. That's the easiest. That's the hot broccoli, cooked broccoli. There's so many things that you can buy that you can eat and you don't, they don't take a lot of prep. And that are quick. So like uh, Instant Pot baked potato or Instant Pot, whatever, all of these different things to plan around your schedule. So anyway, that is a very long tangent. We did not mean to go that long. We've just had so much practice with this one. <laughs> and so just planning how many times you're going to, which is, what does that mean? By the way, we don't say don't go out to eat. We're saying plan it on purpose mm -hmm. and stick to it. Set a goal, stick to it. We know in the Roberson household, we are going to go out on report card to NYPD because it's a fun night and kids eat free. Some of my kids still are young enough to eat mm -hmm. free. And so we do that and it's in the budget and we plan for it. Yeah. So you do that and then we don't go over that. Anything over that is either spending money or it doesn't happen. And right? it's a no. Like yeah. the kids want to go out to eat. You've already hit your limit. It is a no. Yeah. And move on. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So but, change the subject. But again, we talked to Callie one time on this podcast about the Sunday brain drain. And I've all, I've literally always put my schedule down 
and then look at what meals we can do because am I going to have a lot of time at home that day? I can make something or am I going to need a quick, easy answer? So just mm-hmm. make sure you do that. Okay, we're moving on. Sorry. Another habit is cash for things. So I was at the basketball game last night and we work concessions all the time. And our school has a thing where you can charge your concessions to an account that you can pay for later. So that sounds like debt. What we're doing is we're deferring having to pay for it now because we don't have the money, which you probably you might have the money, but you don't have it on you. We're deferring that and making a bill due next month that we're using. That means we're paying in debt. But it's also just I kids just swipe. They're basically oh writing. Gosh. They're just adding so many numbers on there. And I'm like, does your mom? <laughs> yeah. Nope, not until she gets a $200 bill from basketball. But so the, it's our habit to pay for cash. It's not that we say no all the time, but it's... You here. can have as much cash. Yeah. You can you can eat as much as the cash that I have available for you to eat. <laughs> yeah, and when and uh, Vanessa said total transparency. I'm not trying to have do dinner and have athletes and have three different kids going in three mm-hmm. different directions. If we're going to the game, y'all are having a hot dog and chips for dinner, and I don't care, and it's $5 each, and you're... We're, and, Done. All done. And that's just how we're doing it. But we're bringing cash. I'm, and then they know I have a $5 limit. I can, I have a dollar or whatever it is extra that I get to have fun with out of that. That's it though. There's nothing else. And then I know that I don't have a bill coming, but I also pay $15 for everybody to eat. Yeah. And there was one time, guys, where I was so fed up with the concession stands that I literally brought my children food and dinner from the house in containers and said, this is what you're going to have tonight. Yeah. Because they were like, I don't know if that was mad at them and they weren't going to have, I don't remember what it was. But I literally did that. And I didn't care what anyone else thought. Yeah. Or no. I didn't care what their friends thought of them either. And I also, I brought my leftover from our lunch yesterday to dinner last night. But anyway, the point is cash for things. It's the yeah. same when, when you're doing like the school lunch charges. I know that can get very out of hand with kids. And I know you can see what they're charging and stuff. You can set limits to that. But also make them take their lunch. Yeah, it's not that cool. big a deal. Make them pack it too. And probably they'll actually eat stuff if you guys pick out what they want to eat. But it's always cash for things. Like we went to, to the restaurant for her for her lunch yesterday. And we paid in cash. Like, it's not, we're paying for this upfront. We're planning on it. We're not saying, I hope I can have the money when, I, when the bill comes due. That's, and it's just a habit that we're in. It's not better. We're not better for it. It's just the habit that helps us stick to the budget. Well, and it, we know it's working for yeah. us. So it took us a long time to figure this out. We get it. But we're telling you these things, hopefully, so that way you can get there faster. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so number three would be to set your bills on auto pay. Don't, we are tired of all of our clients telling us they're getting these late charges because they forgot to go in and pay their bill. Like, yeah. No. Or we're not budgeting in NSF fees, y'all. That's what I was going to say, NSF fees. You have a system that you know that there's always enough money for your bills in there and that you're never going to, and I used to in my 20s pay NSF fees and then I would get them forgiven. By the way, pro tip, some banks yeah. will forgive if Call. you ask. Call and ask. They have a certain amount. They're already pre-authorized to allow you to forgive. Anyway, I know that number real good because yeah. I used to do it. And I'm like, okay, now I have to get serious because I've hit my limit. Did you have like tallies? Did you have, okay, I've used this one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All done. I have to be serious. But anyway, my point being that is, but for real though, like we were talking uh, a podcast uh, about ADHD. Like I know if I don't have a system in place, I will mess it up. Mm-hmm. I will. It's just who I am as a human. Okay. So what I have is a system where all the money's in there for the bills. They come out. Mm-hmm. I don't have to think about it. And they're not, it's not going to get overdrawn because I'm budgeting every month. I know what the bills are and they're not going to change. They don't change that much anyway. But. Well, and it's going to hold you accountable to keeping the money in there because everything is on auto pay. Yeah. So it's like a double whammy there. So I just, yeah. set, just do it. Set yeah. it up on auto pay. And it's one less thing you have to worry about in the month. Yep. And of course, just so you know, and you, we've said it, so we're not going to overshare on this again, but that also means separating your bills, your se- spending from the bills mm-hmm. and the savings from the bills, because that whole system is what makes it all work together. But yeah. I'm going to move it on. Budget for it instead of buying it for a whim. How many times have I said, even recently, I remember the clients that I said this to, I said, okay, that is not an emergency. Therefore, it can go on the budget next month. Mm-hmm. Like, and what? You mean if I think about it? It's like an we, unheard of concept. And then we want it. We don't just buy it right now? No, that's not how it goes. And it's really annoying, I know, but it's going to really help you stick to the budget. Well, it's adulting. Like, yeah. I have a client and she said, I just, but I spend all month, I buy things. I'm like, what are you buying? I tell, can I have a tip or what, an insight of how many things that you're buying throughout the month and what are you using them for? Yeah. But she said, finally, after months of getting her on this track, she's using her budget the right way. Mm-hmm. And she said, I did not spend nearly as much as I would have spent normally. And, and yeah. I, again, I wanted to know, what are these magical things yeah. that you're spending money on? And another podcast we were talking about, you just, you're filling your house with things. And so yeah. we're helping you there too. So you're welcome. I just, I think the idea is not that you don't get the things. That is not the point. The point is, if I actually need this, yeah. I can put it in the budget next right. month. So maybe you do need 
I don't know, like new air filters. I don't it's, it's super boring, whatever. But what's a fun thing that maybe you need? Uh, candles. Yeah. You can just you need, yeah. That's or you need lunch. a new blanket because there's ripped. I don't know. Yeah. Or, or yeah, maybe you need like a new bedspread or your curtains or whatever. And you je- legitimately have considered this buying decision and you're like and you're okay, frustrated and about it. Curious. Yeah. It's not an emergency. It can go in next month's budget. Mm-hmm. That's the, and that's what our habit is. is. We're not in the habit of always telling ourselves no. You can just look around. It's not true. Look at these earrings. I obviously said yes to me. <laughs> but I'm saying it, it's either part of my spending budget or I'm saying, okay, can this go into the budget next month? If it's really necessary, what do I need? Because it's not an emergency. I don't have to have it right now. And that's the mentality we have to get out of. And I'm giving myself permission to buy it next month if I really need it. Yeah, for sure. All right. So the next thing is make the most out of your clothes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we want to use them up so that way you are using or getting all the life out of them that you can. Yeah. So one one example of this is the our school got new spirit wear the clothes that are that have the school logo or the yeah. mascot or whatever all that kind of stuff so they had a sale on it and it like i saw it come in my inbox at well. merch it's merch it's merch <laughs> was it like 7 or 8 p.m yes it was late and it said flash sale if you buy by midnight mm-hmm. you, the new stuff is in and you'll get a discount and i'm like well hold on the discount was five dollars off 50 bucks yeah so right, it's great. not that but it doesn't matter the the point was we're, when we say making the most out of your clothes, I, all of my kids got new hoodies last year. <laughs> that was merch or whatever, mascot hoodies. And they don't need new ones. No. They don't need new ones. And so just because, uh, so that's what I mean by making the most out of your clothes. I'm looking at the clothes and saying, do we actually need new ones? Mm-hmm. And if we do, we can make a decision. But we don't. Yeah. Yeah. And here's another thing. If your kid really wants it and you're saying no and they say yes, they can buy it. Yeah. So they can use their birthday money, Christmas money, or whatever, to buy the thing that they want that you actually don't know that they really need or that they don't really need. Yeah. And I think making the most of your clothes for me as well. So the flip side of that is I was telling Vanessa, and I told them last night at the game, Melanie, which was my middle child, all of her clothes, all of her shirts are, are three-quarter sleeves now because she decided to grow, which, and she's been asking for a new fleece, which I've been like avoiding, and a uh, fleece jacket. And she said, I've had this one for three years. And I was like, you have. That's correct. And now maybe you can get a new one. Huh. But that's the point. Make the most. Yeah. So, so many other people are just buying it, buying because it's a new fun trend or, or everyone else's. Or, yeah. yeah. Or everyone else's or that I just want it. But let's ask. We asked the question in my house. I have no problem with you getting new things. I want Updating. to. I want you to be warm when it's below freezing. Like I truly do. Important. But you have to need it. Like it's not. I'm not just going to buy something for fun. It's going to be like you have two hoodies. Do you need another one? Nope. You don't actually. So just making the most out of your clothes that way. I think just getting an inventory. Taking inventory of what you have. What do I actually need? And if if you don't have the room or the money for it, then it's a no. And that's okay. Yeah. Like and my kids literally looked at the thing and I said, "Is there anything that you want?" I had a coupon for I volunteered and so I got a coupon for Spirit Wear. And my kid still said, no, I'm fine. I, I'm going to use what I have. And my child doesn't even own a long sleeve shirt. And it was fine because he's, I have a jacket. Don't need it. Like, don't want a long sleeve shirt. Yeah. They, that's the other thing with our boys. They don't want things yeah. that are he, long. I can't get them to wear clothes. Yeah, I asked him the other night. I was like, are you going to put clothes on? He's no. I'm like, fine. Yeah, exactly. Fine. Whatever you do. Done you asking. Do. Done asking. That's <laughs> correct. So the other thing to do is family game night. That's one of our habits. So we want, like we have said in so many other podcasts, we want you to have a fun, fulfilled, like filling life. Yeah. And a lot of times we try to spend money to make that happen. But what is going to really make you feel the most fun is enjoying the people that you love the most, mm-hmm. like literally enjoying them. And it's so free. It's so free to play games. We have so many games at each of our house. You can borrow them. Yeah. Just let us know. And we have all the same games and we have some different ones. And we can let you borrow it. We can especially, Vanessa, we will literally send you taco, cat, goat, cheese, pizza for free. And we don't, have, you don't have to return you it. do not return it. Okay. But listen, the giggles, the whatever around around the family, like that is is way, that is um, going to make memories and last longer. Yeah. But it also helps you have something fun to do, have something to look forward to that doesn't cost money. And you can just enjoy your life that and way. And it probably costs like $5 in pizza or maybe, right, maybe right, right. $6. So we, I don't cook on Fridays. It's literally, I just, that doesn't happen. And I said, no, thank you. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> and so we, what do we claim it? Um, picnic pizza Friday night or something like that? Because mm-hmm. we do. Yeah. Anyway, so it's like you get pizza and then it's game night. Like, mm-hmm. It's so fun. It's so easy. And here, the other part about this, guys, and I will say, and I don't know if it's being ugly towards anyone, but 
listen, there are so many times when my family will go out to dinner and there are, we look at other families and they're all on an electronic. They're not making eye contact. They're not communicating with each other. They have no idea what's going on with each other's lives because mm -hmm. they're all stuck to a screen. This is a chance for you to get around the table, communicate with your kids, laugh, have fun, and it's free. And it helps you stick to the budget. Yep. And speaking of which, we take SkyJo, which you guys gave us. Right. Yeah. Yep. To NYPD every time because you can play it in like five minutes while it's we wait. It's so fun. And it's so so we take it every. They know us there. They're like, we'll give you a big enough table for this ridiculous game that you're bringing. <laughs> it's fine, guys. It's fine. Okay. Last one. Girls shopping. Okay. So it's not that we don't like to shop. Please don't hear that because that's not the case. But we really try to pair that with the budget. I just stopped at a thrift store yesterday because my friend told me about a new thrift store. And I do a, new, a good. She said, so, Wait, where? I'll tell you. You didn't just, even tell me about this. I, okay, I, I'm I, sorry. We'll have to talk after. <laughs> but anyway, I got Ayla this brand new pair of jeans, which it's winter. It's so winter in Florida right now. I know it's winter everywhere. But hey, like, nobody we, laugh at us, okay? We're not prepared for no. that. I don't even know if she really has jeans that fit. But we stopped in and they... Like, and they're still hanging off of her. It's fine. She's so little. She needs to grow some she muscle. Is. Anyway, she got a pair of jeans. They're perfect. I, they look brand new for a dollar. And I'm mm -hmm. like, that's my life. That's what I'm trying. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. And it's not. And she she picked them out. She likes them. They're like that light color, which I hate, but it's fine. It's a new trend. It's fine. Anyway, my point being, she got the clothes mm -hmm. and I feel really good about my life. And that, but that's what we do. It's, it's not that I'm saying no, but uh, it's your eight. Do you really need brand new from Hollister or something. I don't, oh, I don't even know no. if they sell it. <laughs> well, so Catalina went shopping last year with one of her girlfriends from class, and the mom took the girl to, I think it was Hollister, or what's the other one, Abercrombie? Or no, something. it was that one. Because my daughter has gotten a couple of hand-me-downs from Catalina, and that's probably why. Yeah, and it was, <laughs> but they were 100 and, the girl spent $120 on a pair of jeans, and she was 11, I think, at the time, or maybe 12. And I was like, oh, absolutely. And I even told my daughter, I was like, that is a hard pass for you. Like, you will not even be involved in that. Because I don't think there's a point. That's just, that is something that my kids know that we don't do, and that's fine. I'm not. Hold on, we do it. Let me tell you, we got to play those well, closet. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so <laughs> that's fine. Like her mom brought her, and that she used her birthday money, and that's great. But for us, I take Catalina to Plato's Closet. She loves it. She can try on fifty different brands of jeans, figure out the ones that she likes, yeah. and they're like ten, twelve. Yeah. I think the most I've paid for jeans is fifteen bucks yeah. for good pair of jeans, and it's like the best. And then when I was there last time, Catalina pulled out this hot pink blazer, and she's like, mom. I found this. It's a small. You have to wear it. Yeah. And it was $10. Yep. And it's adorable. Yeah. And that just reminds me of when we went to Goodwill in Nashville or Franklin. It was in Franklin. Yeah. And that was a good Goodwill. We got a lot of good. Yeah, we, uh, we, I didn't. I had we not. spent so much time in this. So store. much time. We were supposed to be driving home. It's fine. I think. Anyway, I just. That's when I realized like where the Goodwill is makes a big difference. I hadn't really oh, thought yeah. about that before. And anyway, the point is not that we don't want to shop or buy new things. And it's not that we don't buy new things. Right. This is not from a, a thrift store, although it probably could be from like decades ago. It's fine. But it's that how can we make this shopping like fun, but friendly? Yeah. And we're not the first ones, but thrift stores, it's like a scavenger hunt. What can I find? And what's here? And and then another example is we went to Hobby Lobby the day after Christmas, which is fine. She loved it. It's fine. The idea was very good. It's that I'm going to be buying all of these things, wrapping paper, whatever, cards, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, why don't I get it yeah. while it's 90% off or whatever? So those are the things like just that's what we're saying is how can I make shopping more thrifty mm -hmm. and more frugal on purpose? Yeah. So when we went to Hobby Lobby, hear us on this. We didn't just go in there and buy a bunch of stuff we weren't going to use or going to buy. I was really interested in what people were buying because oh, they, they were going banana. But they, but it would be like 80 of a, a white sparkly doll or, or dog. Or and then something. I'm like, are you giving those? Is your plan to give those away? How do? Why do you need eighty yes. sparkly dogs or whatever? Anyway, I really wanted to ask them because you could tell they had a plan too. <laughs> I really did, and but like I had a list. I knew exactly what I wanted. I'd get it every year because I make cookies for my husband and we need boxes or whatever. So like I had a list. I knew what I wanted. We were in and out. So don't just go if you go shopping, even at thrift stores, Plato's Closet, whatever. Go with a plan. Oh, yes. For you, so you don't get sucked in because you can, that can happen too. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's such a good point that you brought up. It's we know you need a new pair of jeans or we know we need uh, boxes for the cookies or whatever the thing is. Go in for the thing. Yeah. Not just for the, the thrill of the things because that's, uh, that's going to end reverse back to when you have all these things in your house and you are so sad. And <laughs> also, if you want to plan a window shopping day, do yeah. that. I did that with my daughter. Like we went, we spent a whole day in Pensacola one time. We didn't buy one thing except go out to lunch. But that's what the day was for us. It was like just going and seeing an experience and just having fun together mm -hmm. um, with not about shopping. So you can do that too. Yeah. All right. So that was our 
some habits that we have that we hope will help you. Maybe one of those will resonate. Maybe you can just say, all of that was bananas. I'm not listening to you. I don't even know who you are anymore. I used to love you. I don't know anymore. But I can do that one thing. That's yeah. what you could do. Yeah. You could do the one thing. Figure one thing that we said out of the seven. Reminder, it was plan about your food and when you're going out to eat. It was using cash, for, at least for sp specific categories. It was setting up the auto bill pay system. Budget for it for next month. If it's not an emergency, you can you get to have it, but you have to wait till next month when it's in the budget. Making the most out of your clothes. Implementing family game night instead of restaurant night. And then also the girl shopping. Whatever version of that that works for you. Yeah, and to help you guys put all this together, we have our signature budget template. If you go to mayadobalance.com forward slash budget, you're going to find it there. It'll It really simplifies your budgeting life. 